Hey, what's good with the YouTube? This is your boy Rojo. This is the Rojo Room. Today, as you can tell by the thumbnail and the title, we're going to discuss the relationships between Northerners and the Brothers. Now, the Northerners, it's essentially one group. Although there is going to be big homies, everybody functions on the same page. With the Brothers, there's going to be BGF, there's going to be Kumi, there's going to be Crips, there's going to be Bloods, and then there's going to be all sorts of other little small organizations as well now I do this video in response to Doves as far as the southerners and the white relationship goes and he's absolutely correct in that uh, you know although historically the southerners and the whites have ran together and you know basically been on the same page that doesn't mean they're like this you know and it's the same with with the north and the brothers now what you got is the old, an enemy of an enemy's a friend or something along those lines. So that's where it starts, man. The, the, the big homies from down south and the white boys had some common interests. The white boys didn't like the brothers. The MA didn't like the homies from up north. You know, and it wasn't even really a north and south thing back then. So, you know, you gotta read between the lines. So, you know, we share a common enemy, let's be friends type of thing. Now, that don't mean that there's there was ever forged any bond. You know, we called it a, a working relationship. And that sometimes throughout history, it was a good relationship. You know, there was a lot of things being accomplished together, getting stuff done. And at other times, not so much. You know, I was around for the tail end of the good part of the working relationship. And uh, it got weird. You know what I mean? There was incidents on yards where, you know, we, we went to go do a move and, you know, out of respect, we let the, the higher ups for the for the brothers know what was going on, you know, and there was kind of a fit about it, you know what I mean? And a lot of yelling and drawing attention to the police with something that had nothing to do with them, man. And at that point in Quentin, we basically said, you know, we're not telling them nothing no more, you know, because when you share a yard with somebody in the hole you got to let them know what's going on so their people don't react in a messed up way when stuff starts going down. So, like, say the Southerners are going to remove a white dude, you know, one of the Southerners will go over and get at the white boys and be like, hey, we got this going on today, you know, five minutes before the end of the yard, just make sure your people are over here and we can handle it. And, you know, just, just so everybody knows, the only person who never seems to know is the person getting hit. You know what I mean? So... We had the same thing with the brothers, man. And one time we had to do, a, uh, we had some things we were going to take care of on the six yard and let them know, hey, this is what we got going on. Oh, the, there was a lot of yelling and stuff. And after that, I just cut them off. Like, you know, uh, we can't let them know our business no more. You know, if, if, if they become a problem, they become a problem and we'll handle that as well. And, you know, and that's no offense to nobody. That was just a particular couple of individuals there at that time who was behavior was very suspect yet they held a leadership position and now let's not get it twisted man i've had a long relationship with a lot of groups you know what i mean and the crips they've always looked out for me you know i was i was in Susanville one time and the homies were on lockdown and i wiggled out as an other because that's what i told them i was when i came in because like i've said before in my time you didn't say where you were from you know what I mean? I didn't have no tattoos, no nothing. So I was never going to admit I was a northerner. And uh, they put me down as an other because I said I didn't sell up with the whites. But I didn't admit I was a homeboy. You know what I mean? So the homeboys got put on lockdown. And there was like a hundred and something Southsiders and probably 300 white boys on the yard. And then there was me. You know what I mean? So... You know, I was cool with a bunch of Crips out there. Smurf from Grape Street, a couple individuals from Harlem 30, some dudes from Neighborhood, uh, dude from Long Beach. And every day, while the homies were on lockdown, they would come to my building and make sure I had somebody to, 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 to stroll the yard and, and go to the movements with, because I still got to go to movements. And it's just me. You know what I mean? You know, there's basically, you know, at all the, the tables in the chow hall, you know, there'd be tables with... A couple tables with the brothers, a couple tables with the homeboys, a couple tables with others, then it'd be a couple tables with Woods, then it'd be a couple tables of Southsiders. I was going there all alone, bro, and the, and the brothers were 
you know, without me asking them, came up and made sure I had somebody to rock with and made sure I wasn't alone. They're like, we ain't going to let nothing happen to you. <clears throat> and I wasn't even worried about the Southsiders because there was no, uh, there was no tension on the yard between the North and the South at the time. You know, there was more tension, and which has always been the case in my experience with the woods. And, you know, me, me, and me looking like I do, the, the white dudes already didn't like me. So now I'm out there alone, you know, without the 100 homeboys that are on lockdown to have my back. I figured I was like, well, hey, brother, let's go get him, brother. You know, I figured that was coming down, you know what I mean? So I was very fortunate to, uh, that for whatever reason, them Crips took a liking to me. You know, I used to be in the white pile a lot and talking to a lot of them, and they had my back, and I appreciated it. And, uh, Throughout my whole experience, you know, I got an old J1 number, you know, and then I got an F number as well. The most violence I've seen has been the South Side and the white boys going at it, not chilling, <clears throat> not be, not, you know, not working together. Those have been the most incidents I've personally seen, followed closely behind by North and White. Then I've seen South and Black. You know, I, I haven't I haven't seen a whole lot of North and South confrontation in my time. You know what I mean? It's it's mostly been the South and the Whites. And that's just my personal experience. You gotta remember, you know, there was 30, 33 prisons, you know, each of them have at least three yards, at least. A lot of them have more. So there's a hundred and something yards. And I've talked about this before, like, your experience is yours uniquely. You know what I mean? You don't... Me and you could be cellies on the same yard at the same time. And if you ask me and my celly about our experience, our stories could be vastly different just by who we hang out with, what we're exposed to, what we perceive, you know, your status, things of that nature. And that, that'll go for anybody. But imagine, there's over 100-something yards, so... You know, while in this institution, the, the whites and the blacks might have been going at it or on, you know, they're different yards, man. You could be an A yard and a B yard, and it could be cool with, you know, say, Southerns and Crips. And on the different yard, it could be on. You know, it's it's a trip how things work. So there's no, you know, everybody's like, oh, the, the Southsiders are racist because they hang around the Nazis and, and they don't, they both hate the brothers and stuff. And that's not necessarily the case, man. I mean, individually, of course. You know, there, there's racist type people in every group. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's, not, it's not set in stone that we rock together against the North or, or the Blacks or, or, the, or the homies rock against the, the Whites and the Southsiders because that's just not facts. Facts was everybody worked together in those groups for a particular amount of time. But like I said, the biggest amount of problems I've seen have been Southern versus white. So, you know, you go, you, you know, a lot of people try to go back and say, you know, these dudes hate these dudes and they rock with them because they all hate the same people. That's not the case, man. That is just not the case. I, I've seen it with my own eyes. Them dudes take off on each other more than anybody else. And, uh, you know, there's been problems historically with, with homies and, and Kumi. And that used to be like you know, kind of like the favorite group. You know, they were from up north. You know, a lot of people intermingled on the streets and knew each other and this and that. But what had happened with them is, you know, BGF was always the dominant group. And then they allowed Kumi to basically be the same as them. And Kumi took over. There was nothing BGF could do. You know, and they had already been weakening since the 80s. Ever since they started the shoe programs, BGF just numbers just, they just... They just had a downfall, you know, and Kumi came out strong in the, in the, you know, late 80s, early and mid 90s, and they blew up, and they were youngsters, and they weren't playing, you know what I mean? So there was a lot going on with that, and eventually people are going to butt heads, man. You know, like I said, the North and the South, they program different, and, and you know, they program much more seriously than the mother groups. Now, don't get me wrong, there's, there's standout groups within them, like the AB, they function at that highest level. But all, all the white dudes do not follow the AB's example. North and South, 
everybody follows the big homies example no matter what the geography is so they're going to do what needs to be done at any cost there's not going to be questions there's not going to be like oh i'm not getting involved in this there's none of that from north and south period while the white dudes and the black dudes they have more options as to how they want to do things just straight up you know and i got to the point where man i didn't mess with nobody except people in my regiment period you know what i mean because you know i ended up on violations and stuff and you know i'm used to being in the hole and being in the shoe and things to run a certain way i end up and read on some violations and i'm trying to get stuff established and these people are like oh no that's not really my thing and i'm just like bro <laughs> I didn't even know what to say because it was just so far out of anything I'd ever experienced. And that's like the beginning of this new generation where, you know, historically everybody just fell in place and whoop whoop and now there's all kinds of rebels and, you know, independent forms of thoughts and it, things are just different, man. But the point of this is, man, everybody is basically for their own group. You know, that stuff's kind of old, man. You know, them alliances haven't been tight on either side, white and south, black and north, for decades. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a common misconception that just because something may have been some way in the 60s and 70s, and it really wasn't like that then, it was just like working together, you know, toward a common purpose, it's definitely not like that nowadays. You know what I mean? And that's just what it is, man. So Dubs is absolutely correct about his assessment. I've seen it firsthand, you know, the Southerners and the Whites. I've seen them in the most disturbances than us and the Whites. You know, it wasn't even North against Southern as much in my experience. Everybody's got a different one. But the fact of the matter is people don't rock together like that and don't believe it. That was decades ago. All right, this is your boy Rojo. This is the Rojo Room. I'm gone.